Well, good morning, welcome. Good morning. Great to be back. I look forward to this. It's, it's my day. So we've been uh, talking about the cross. Amen. And uh, that Bible that you have in your hand that you brought today is it, just filled from beginning to end of the most wonderful, beautiful stories you could ever imagine. But if I have to pick three out, and I have to do this for me as much as you, I have to pick out the blood, the cross, and the resurrection. I could hear those sermons on just those three topics every day for the rest of my life, and I still wouldn't really grasp the, the gravity, the significance of those three parts. Mm -hmm. It's all about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's all about yeah. salvation. Mm -hmm. We need to hear it more and more. So today we will be in Galatians 6.14, and it's a simple verse, but the date was actually July 6, 1945. Let's go back in history. What happened? The place was Alamogordo, New Mexico. Something happened on that day that affects us to this day. It most probably will affect us for the human race as long as we live. From that day until now, the entire world it lives under what is called the nuclear shadow. Put on the news. How many times a day do you hear about possibly nuclear war? It's just a common word thrown out. But from that day to the first atomic bomb was exploded, that one bomb affects everything. Think about it. It affects the United States military. It affects our government, our spending. No matter where you go, you can't get under that shadow. You can't get away from that shadow. There's another shadow that we're going to look at today. The world lives under the shadow, but many don't realize it. It's a shadow that every follower of Jesus should follow. Willingly and joyfully. The shadow of the cross. Amen. From the time, think about it, from the time that Jesus was born, he, didn't he live in that shadow? The cross was never absent from his mind. It was never far from his soul or his heart. That was his passion. He spent three years with those 12 disciples. And the first time it was ever recorded that he sat down to teach them anything, what did he talk about? Mark 8, 31 tells us, He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. On another occasion, when the disciples, they, they finally, finally got what, what Jesus was really talking about. Peter even called him what? The Son of God. The, son, the, son, the living Son of God. The Jewish Messiah. The one that they've been looking for. What's the first, first thing that Jesus said again? He said, congratulations. Come on down. Pick up the prize. No. <laughs> he said the same thing in Luke 9.22 tells us. And he said, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law. And he must be killed and on the third day rise again. It must have been pretty important for Jesus to repeat. Every morning when Jesus woke up, he lived in that shadow. Every night when he laid his head down, he lived in that shadow. Everywhere Jesus walked, the shadow was with him, wasn't it? Yes. Ever since his, that resurrection, we live in the shadow of the cross, folks. Every religion and ideology, think of this, they have a visual symbol, don't they? Mm -hmm. Which illustrates a significant feature of the history of its beliefs. Buddhism, for example, is symbolized by that lotus flower. Because it's a wheel shape and it depicts the cycle of birth and death and reincarnation. They have the first two right. We're born, we die, but that last one is a little <laughs> off. We know what it is. Modern day Judaism is symbolized by the Star of David, which speaks of that God's government, that, that covenant with David, that one day the Messiah would be descended. And from him would sit on the throne forever. Islam sim symbolized by the crescent in, in which Ancient times was a symbol of sovereignty and power. Today, without a question, the universal symbol for, for Christianity, we know what it is. It's right here. It's a simple cross. How many of the, us we have one of these in our own home, hanging on the wall? The cross of Jesus is, here's the thing, it's not just a symbol of the Christian faith. You ready? 
It's the secret of the Christian life. Amen. Or none. Our entire lives should be lived in that shadow of the cross and built around the cross, the truth of what it brings. There's one statement from Apostle Paul that, that perfectly captures completely and totally how the cross should affect our lives every single moment. From the second you woke up, woke up today until you came through that door, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world, Galatians 6.14. What a statement coming from a man who had a lot to brag about. But he was alive. You can take your pick. Wasn't he the greatest preacher in the world? Yes. The greatest mission, mission man in the whole church? Yes. The greatest of faith? The greatest theologian? The greatest religion? Author of all times? Mm -hmm. I know you've heard these facts before, but I just have to repeat them in my own head. He wrote more books than anyone else in the New Testament. Almost half. He had a lot to brag about. Amen. If any of them did. Yet Paul said this. There's only one thing that I'll brag about. There's only one thing that I ever will show pride in. There's only one thing that will make my heart swell, and that is the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. If he said it, I believe it. Yes. That's what we should do too. You don't understand living today, folks, how weird that statement must have been 2,000 years ago. Think about it. Two of the major of the three cultures of that day the cross was, was only something not to brag about, but it was grossly offensive. You didn't even want to hear that word. To the Romans, the, the cross was so despicable that the Cicero, the great Roman orator, wrote this. Even the mere word cross must remain far, not only from the lips of the citizens of Rome, but also from their thoughts, their eyes, their ears. To the Jews, the crucifixion was the same as hanging. It was a curse to them. It, it was for common thieves, murderers. It was the lowest class of criminals would die that way. To the Greeks, the cross was absolute nonsense. It was foolish, wasn't it? Christianity was so difficult for them to fathom because how could they understand that any son of God would want to be crucified? They just couldn't comprehend what Christianity was. Nevertheless, Paul says this, my life is lived in the shadow of the cross. Paul is saying the same thing to us today, that if you are a follower of Jesus, and I know everyone here is, but how many of us know someone who isn't? Right. You should live your life in the shadow of the cross. That's what it comes down to. We're all going to live in the shadow of something. Think about it. Maybe it's the shadow of money, fame, fortune. You can go on and on. We all have our own little shadow, our, our mini shadow, I kind of call it. You were mentioning it. We have to get rid of it. Maybe it's the fear of something. We all fear. We're told to leave it to Jesus, but we do have that in us. Maybe it's the shadow of guilt over something you've done wrong in your life. Every day, you should live in the shadow of the cross. So let me tell you what that means. We're going to go through four points. Number one, in the shadow of the cross, I will live a life of praise. Let's say that. I will live a life of praise. That's number one. Say it again. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to notice something here. It's not the cross that makes Jesus so special. You ever think about that? It's Jesus Christ that makes the, the cross so special. We're not just to be proud of a cross and hanging on our wall in our house and look, look, look what I have. Our pride should be in the cross of, of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you realize it or not, but the crucifixion it was a very common way of execution back then in Bible days, especially in the days of the Roman Empire. You, you realize there was over 30,000 Jews who were crucified on the cross by crucifixion. You know what's really strange? Nobody in the world, for all the money in the world, could name 29,999 of those Jews. <laughs> the only Jew we can name that was crucified on that cross, let's all say it, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. It's Jesus that makes that cross so special. It's Jesus that makes the cross so unique. It's Jesus that makes the cross the reason for us to live every day praising God. 
What more do you need? It's not the cross itself that's so wonderful, folks. 2,000 years ago, crosses were a dime a dozen. 2,000 years ago, people were dying on the cross. They were dying a dozen. It is Christ on the cross that makes the cross so amazing. Amen. That's why Paul refers to it as the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not my Lord, not somebody else's Lord, our Lord. As Lord, Jesus is God. As Christ, He is the Jewish Messiah. As Savior, isn't He the Savior of the world? Amen. 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 When you realize who was crucified on that cross and why He was crucified, then you have to live a life of praise. You have to. If you believe, you have to. 29,999 of those Jews died on the cross for themselves and for themselves alone. But Jesus, he died on the cross, not for himself, but for you and me Amen. and everyone outside these doors. That fact alone should tell me that no matter what circumstances there are in my life, maybe I'm unemployed, maybe I'm battling a difficult disease today, maybe I'm going through a rough spot in my relationship, but living in that shadow... I should praise God every day, no matter what's Amen. happening to me. Amen. That the Lord Jesus died on that cross for me. Next, in the shadow of the cross, I will live a life of purpose. Let's repeat that. I will live a life of purpose. If the cross tells me anything, if it tells me anything, it tells me to everything there is a purpose. God had a purpose for the cross, and the cross has a purpose for me. That, that's what this is telling me. Acts, 20, Acts 2.23 so this is about the crucifixion of Jesus. This man was handed over to you by God's set purposes and foreknowledge. You know, God had some very specific purposes in mind when he sent Jesus to the cross, didn't he? He didn't just send him down here to wash feet, to have some miracles. The first thing that God did with the cross of Jesus, it once and proved for all times that his love for the world. And in the process, defined what real love is all about. You know, a lot of us, I know a lot of men, especially, who grew up in rough families. They don't, they weren't objected to that, subjected to that love that you need to understand the love that Jesus has for us. It starts at home. It starts with our families. There are all kinds of skeptics out there that, that watch television, that read the newspapers, the magazines, listen to radios. And... And they're saying all these stabbings, all these horrible things going on in our world. The earthquakes. Have you seen lately earthquakes like almost every day in California? Yes. Back in places where when I was a kid you never hear of one. New Jersey, mm -hmm. Illinois, Tennessee. Read the prophecy. Read, read Jesus with the signs. Amen. And people say, well, these things have been going on for, for a sense of beginning any time. Yes, but they're, they're, to, to me anyway, they're becoming more frequent. Yeah. And they're going to be becoming more intense. But they say with this sneer, these people out there that don't understand, where is the love of God? Where is the love of God in all this? Why is this happening? If he loves us so much, why is he letting this happen to us? Simple. They're looking in the wrong place. They should be in here. Yes. They should be listening to your pastor. All you ever need to know about God's love is the cross of Jesus. It's simple. 1 John 4.10 says, this is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as what? As an atoning sacrifice for our sin. Yeah. Yeah. Romans 5, 8 puts it this way. But that God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, and we are still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, there's no simple explanation for the cross of Jesus except for the love of God. Amen. What God... What Man, person would send his own son to die, knowingly. And, th and another thing that kind of escapes my mind once in a while, I don't know about you, but Jesus was God. Yeah. Yes. That makes this even more important. Yes. He sacrificed his own life, but he had to come as a human. There's no definition of true love that does not include the cross of Jesus. The very purpose of my life, as I live in the shadow of the cross, it should be defined, it should be defined by love. 
And again, I go back to many men when I was in prison. They don't, they don't have a clue what love is. You have to be shown it. Remember the two greatest commandments God ever given. Both resolve, revolve around what? Love. love. Yeah. Number one purpose in life. Above everything else. You, we heard it before. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And to love others as yourself. And that is hard. Yes. <laughs> it's easier to love yourself. Because I'm, I'm the best. You know, even though I got big ears, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good. But to love your neighbor, who's a dog barking in the middle of the night, we have to work on it, don't we? Yeah. We are human, but we know what we have to do. Amen. It's just doing it, and the more you do it, the number. My number two purpose in life is to love my neighbor. If I live in that shadow of the cross, my life will be lived. With the purpose of love. All of my life is built around <clears throat> that Jesus had died on that cross. Yours should too. The Bible says that Jesus died for me so that I would live for him. Corinthians 5.15 says, And he died for all, that those who should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. You know, God, didn't he have a specific purpose he wanted to accomplish? in the death of Jesus so that we would have a purpose in life that we would live when I live in that shadow of the cross I live a life of purpose I'm here today because I have purpose years ago you wouldn't find me in church I don't know if you were in Bob's church when I first started but when I went up to him I said you have me for two week weekends a month I'll give you two weekends look where that turned out <laughs> Don't underestimate the power that cross. <laughs> I had it up to here with church. This isn't church. Mm -hmm. This is love. This is Christianity. One on one. Amen. Next, I will live a life of power. In the shadow of the cross, I will live a life of power. Let's say it. I will live I a will life live of power. power. There's a power that is found in living in that shadow. It's greater than that nuclear power I was telling you about in the beginning. It's stronger power than any power financial, political, physical power is found in this statement which says, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me. You know, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, this is what God did. He made sure that the world was crucified on the cross. Amen. Not just Jesus. I don't mean physical world, but the moral world that is such a mess. The ethical world. The philosophical world. And all the world has to offer us that would drag us down. And all the world that has to throw everything in front of us that trips us up. All of that was crucified on the cross. And if that's true, why does Christians still have so much trouble? Why is there still divorces, drugs, because we are still sinners. The day you die. But there is a way to get over it. Amen. We can overcome. Amen. You don't come to church like I wanted to do 15 years ago, twice a month. You have to be here every Sunday and, and on Bible day, study days. You have to stay connected to the cross. Yes. You take some, somebody who knows. The cross, because of that cross... Every follower of Jesus has the power to do something that no one else has. We have the power to overcome the world. That's what I was just talking about. That's how you overcome the world. The flesh, the devil, the temptation, the sin. There's, there's an exercise you can try sometimes, especially if you're fighting a spiritual battle today. And you, and you seem to be losing it. You ever have one of those? We all have. If there's a particular type of temptation that you find difficult to resist, listen, or a particular type of sin that seems to be gaining foothold in your life. Try this. The next time you think about giving into that temptation, the next time you think about giving into sin, I want you to stop and take just 10 seconds out of your busy day and focus on Jesus. Focus on Him dying on the cross. I want you to focus specifically on three things. Who was on that cross? Why was he on that cross? 
and what the cross has done for me. After 10 seconds, it's, it's impossible for you to do what you were thinking of doing or, or to say what you were thinking of saying or to, or to watch what you were planning on watching. It's impossible. Focus on Jesus. There's something about that cross that both kills and it gives life. Amen. It kills the joy of sin. It, it kills the, the thrill of temptation. It gives life to desire to be holy. The desire to be godly, the desire to be righteous. That's what we all long for, isn't it? Yeah. We know when we did wrong. But you know who it hurts first? I always like to say this. <laughs> God. He knew you were going to do it. The shadow of the cross, you can live every day in a life of power. With power. And next. In the shadow of the cross, I will live a life of passion. Let's say it. I will I live, live a life, a life of life passion. passion. One of the reasons why I like to come here, this is one of the smallest churches, but it's the most powerful and the most passionate churches I've ever been in. Unbelievable. I preach at a couple cowboy churches, so that's, that's my passion. And uh, it's, it's hard to get anybody's attention. It's hard to hear an amen. It's hard to... To communicate, but that's that's where, where where it is. So just you know, I'm talking about praise. Give yourself a big hand of praise. Thank you, Lord. you deserve it. You deserve it. When I can see the same faces, I come in lately once a month, every once every two months. The same people are sitting in the same seats. You know, you guys are on on the ball. But I will live a life of passion. So we're gonna end it like this. Notice one thing that Paul went on to say. I have been crucified to the world. Amen. In the shadow of the cross, not only the world is crucified, but, but you are crucified to the world. Amen. Have you ever occurred to you that crucifixion is, is just the only form of death that you cannot inflict on yourself? You can hang yourself, you can shoot yourself, poison yourself, but, but you cannot crucify yourself. Crucifixion is something that must be done to you. You must surrender to it. That's why the cross is the key to the Christian life. That's why the cross is something that we can write about. Boast about. To be proud about. It's not just an object on my, my wall. When I see it, I feel proud. I, I have passion. I don't just walk by it. I look at it. Yeah. And take a second. Say thank you. It's when you voluntarily surrender every day to be crucified to this world. You die to your ego. You die to your ambition. You die to what you want and what you think. You surrender to everything in the shadow of the cross. To the God that loves you. Amen. You know, you find victory in this life. That is something we all all to be passionate about. Through the cross we find victory. Yep. Be passionate in it. Yep. You know, it's not without irony that Mel Gibson, that magnet, that magnificent, no, I'm sorry. It's a word. That magnificent depiction of that common that movie was in, The Passion of the Christ. It's a compelling emotional desire. That, that's what passion means. It drives everything you do. So why do we refer to the death of Jesus Christ as his passion? For one simple reason. The cross of Jesus points to everything that God is passionate about. Everything. God is so passionate that we spend eternity with him. And what happened? He sent Jesus to die on that cross. Amen. Actually, he sent himself. And you know, I said that once. I it's in my mind, I like. Yeah. I have to keep yeah. relating them two together. Yes. Yes. You can't separate it. God Himself came. Jesus Christ was so passionate that our sins would be forgiven and spend eternity with Him. He willingly gave His life on that cross. Amen. The truth is, you know what you're really passionate about by when you're willing to lay your down your life down for something. That's what the Father did. He laid his own life down for his son. That's why I can say to everyone today, 
In the shadow of the cross, there's no sacrifice that you can make that's too great. You can give up anything that is hanging over you right now. Yeah. Any temptation, any, any, any thoughts of anything wrong. There's no amount of suffering, folks, that you and I can go through that's not too unbearable, is it? No burden we carry can be too heavy. No assignment that God gives us can be too, too difficult. How can it be? Have you ever thought about the fact that the closer you get to an object that is casting that shadow, what happens? The bigger the shadow gets? Yeah. Well, my prayer for all of you, table of grace, is that you would be so close to that cross of Jesus that it would completely cover you in his whole congregation. Amen. Yes. Yes. And as you get under that shadow of the cross, remember, the one who created this world, the universe, the stars, everything that's involved with life, would rather die for you, which he did, than live without you. It's all about love. Paul was a bragger. He could have bragged, but he didn't. I shouldn't have said he's a bragger. He's not. We are. <laughs> if you want to brag about something, Brag about that. Mm -hmm. Brag about the cross. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. able to praise his name with the ability to love. But how about those people out there? How about that man that I saw yesterday that has his head bent over by the wash with his bicycle next to him? You know, we're not all meant to go into the world in those kind of ways. But you know I have a passion for, yeah. for the homeless. Yeah. Been incarcerated. We are fortunate to be in the shadow of the cross. But how many aren't? You see, when I was thinking coming up here today, if to have a shadow, there has to be light behind it. We have Jesus. Amen. They don't. Aren't we supposed to be the light of the world? Amen. Aren't we supposed to carry our own cross out there and show the world? And it doesn't have to be on a street. How about in your own living room? With your family, your friends. That's why you come here to learn about the Word. It shouldn't stay here. We're not all preachers. We all know Jesus, don't we? Yeah. The best preaching isn't done from a Bible. Right. So my last words to you is pick up your cross. Amen. Can you see the passion in my eyes? Can you see the joy in my smile? Can you feel the fire Set me free. 
Follow me. 